the next thing I need to cover from last week is 2.3. 2.3 is behavior as a function. You need to be able to know when the function is in. Decreasing. It is positive. It is negative. Um, and you need to be able to identify maxima, minima, and whether these are absolute or relative. In the, um, there's one other part for 2.3, but that's not going to be on your first test. That's identifying things as even or odd. Um, verify that. Yes, that is not on the test. Um, basically, the key things, um, increasing function. That means when it's going uphill to the right. So that's always going uphill. Decreasing when it's going downhill to the right. Positive is when it's above zero. Negative is below zero. Let me just draw a wonky old graph here and talk about some Every time I have a mountaintop or a valley at the bottom, these are what we call extrema. Ones in the top are called maxima. Ones on the bottom are called minima. This one on the far right here, because it's the lowest that the graph ever goes, is called an absolute. And everything else is going to be called a relative. So this is a relative minimum, relative minimum, relative max, relative max. The reason why there's no absolute max is because my graph infinity. That's the gist that you need to be able to do the homework. And we are going to do problems one and two. Problem one gave you that graph. It is asking us for a whole bunch of stuff. A wants the intercepts, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, distinguish between the two. Let's say x-intercepts, um, x-intercepts at negative seven, negative two and a half, zero. Six. I intercept one of them. That is at zero. Next thing it wanted is the domain of the function. So we do two point two. To start at the bottom, uh, my x actually domain is this way. We we'll start at the right. My x's go from negative infinity all the way up to positive. Negative infinity. C, range of the function, range is my y's, starts down at negative infinity and goes all the way up top here, and that top is that range is seven, such as E, want intervals when it's going uphill. Going uphill from here all the way. Here, uphill, uphill in these two regions. Here, so getting in the black. Increase. Pull up arrow there. Negative infinity to negative five.
and from negative one up until like three. Round brackets on all of those because at the top it's not increasing or decreasing, it's constant at the bottom. Put a union. I graph, I want to know when. Next thing it says is when is it negative? Negative is when is it below axis? Negative infinity to negative seven. Round bracket because at negative seven it is actually zero. It is negative in this region here from negative two and And it is negative from six, my x intercept. Yeah. Relative minima and relative max. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to that is going to be at the point negative one, negative two. relative max. These are both relative, but one's also an absolute. My axes are negative five. And at three and a half, 11. Does it have an absolute maximum? Yes. If so, what is its x value or values? Does it occur? Two is that. H. Does it have an absolute minimum? No, because so again, it doesn't. Not very difficult. You just got to take your time and make sure you're precise with these round brackets. Again, when it's increasing or decreasing, when it hits the top or bottom, it's actually flat there. So we're never going to use square brackets there. Same thing with pot. When it when is it positive or negative? Square brackets because zero. Intercepts actually either positive. There for you. We'll do problem number two. Problem two from two point three. First thing it asks is for the domain of the function. Domain of the function is all real numbers. I'm just drawing in horizontal asymptote here. The domain is all real numbers. It's my x. Negative infinity to infinity. E, they wanted the range of the function. Not B. The range of the function is from negative 3 to infinity for my horizontal asymptote. And it does. At three. It wants to estimate um, e of negative two, e of negative three. E of negative two, I put a negative two in. I come down here, so I put the negative two in, and I get approximately two. I put a negative three in, and I get approximately negative two. A negative two. Okay, and again, I do not need you to be exact on there. I want you to be very close, unless the graph actually goes exactly through one of those dots. Um, next thing we want to do, p. E, they want to know when g of x equal to. So they want to know when is the y value. Negative one. That y value, the x value for that y value of negative x. I want to know when is the y value equal to five? So the y value is equal to five. Then x positive. Give the intervals on when the graph is increasing. Well, this graph is always in. 
intervals that increase. Now, what x values does the function have a relative maxima or minima? No relative maxima or and state the intervals on which the function is positive. Intervals that I'm going to be giving are my x intervals on when my y's are greater than zero. Looks to be at about negative one half is where it turns positive. Negative one half to infinity. In the even odd section that's in 2.3, we're going to discuss that after the test. And uh, even though I did the homework problems for you, make sure you understand it. Um, we'll have a couple problems like the test was.